Social media platforms have dominated most businesses' marketing efforts for several years now. Choosing the best platform for your business can be tricky. In this video, I'll go through my top nine social media platforms, the pros and cons of each platform, and what can make a difference to your business. Hi, my name is Steve Welsh and I've been managing and marketing businesses for over 28 years. Welcome to the channel where I help businesses and entrepreneurs navigate marketing online, managing your business for growth and using the latest technology to reach customers. If this video helps you, then consider subscribing. The first thing to consider is who will be managing the platform for you, yourself, your staff, an agency or a specialist. I'm not gonna lie, social media marketing takes time to plan and take action. Not only that, but the constant requirement for content is also draining on resources. However, done correctly, it can generate one, fantastic exposure for your business, two, allow you to engage with customers, three, keep your business front of mind, and four, create a loyal following of customers. You can't just create an account and post every so often. Social media marketing is about finding a tribe. To do this, you need to show up every day with value and benefits for your customers. A common mistake lots of businesses make on social media is just using it for a sales message. If all they see from you is buy my stuff, then they will switch off from reading your posts and become blind to your business. If there's one thing I've learned over the years, that is to choose a platform learn everything about it, then you can add another platform. In the beginning, if you try and market on several platforms at once, it becomes totally overwhelming. It's better to do one thing well than lots of things poorly. Let's go through my top nine social media platforms by users with some tips on how to use them. I found some great stats and numbers about social media on the Smart Insight blog. There's a link in the description below. So let's look at Facebook. It feels like Facebook has been around since the beginning of time. Weirdly, it was launched in 2004 and has grown exponentially since then. It is now the largest social media platform in the world by user count. Facebook has about two and a half billion monthly active users at the time of writing. The demographics are the largest age category is 25 to 54, with 60% being female audience. The purpose of the platform is building relationships and brand loyalty. So the pros, the first pro is a large number of active users. The second pro is the variety of types of posts, such as text, images, video, and live video. The third pro is private groups to get your customers into to develop a better one-to-one -one relationship. And the fourth pro is great analytics. So let's get onto the cons. The first downside is the limited reach without a decent advertising budget. The second downside is it takes consistent engagement and it's time consuming. The third downside is inadequate search engine. Searching for people or businesses is tough on Facebook. The fourth item is without a mix of organic and paid reach, it's challenging to get any traction. So the second social media platform that I'm looking at is LinkedIn. LinkedIn started as an online business networking environment, online TV and job finding site. Over time, LinkedIn has become a much bigger platform with an emphasis on connection and engagement. LinkedIn is not a social media platform in the traditional sense. However, over time, the community aspect has grown. People don't go to LinkedIn for entertainment or online shopping. LinkedIn has over 6 million active users. The demographics, largest age category between 30 and 49. Its purpose is news, articles, conversations for business development and B2B business. The first pro is great for promoting business related content. The second, it's built for finding and recruiting new talent. The third is it's easy to use as a search engine to find people and businesses. The downside is not designed for e-commerce. And the second area is it's difficult to contact large businesses. And the third area that's the downside is full access requires a monthly membership payment. So let's get stuck into the third social media platform in my top nine, and that is Twitter. Twitter was a brilliant platform in many ways straight from the start. One of the main benefits was the restriction on characters on each post or tweet. Twitter was one of the first platforms to make use of hashtags, allowing users to reduce the noise of so many tweets and their feed through the list. This strategy means that Twitter is more of a real-time update platform. Tweets can be text only, text and image, text and video, all with external links to your website. Twitter has 330 million monthly active users. And the demographics are largest age category of 18 to 29, with a purpose of news, conversations and public relations. So the pros of Twitter is it's easy to engage followers and influencers. It's also free targeting with hashtags and app mentions. And it's also more comfortable to talk directly to customers 
and prospects. The downside of Twitter is there's lots of noise competing with yourself. The second downside is requires more posts and tweets than other platforms each day. And the third downside is it can drive website traffic but not necessarily sales. And as a side note, a probably a fourth downside is the fact that you can be trolled and harassed. Anyway, let's get on to the fourth, which is Pinterest. Pinterest went live in 2010 and is best suited to visually driven businesses. Pinterest's main features are images and infographics. The platform is especially suitable for small creative type businesses. Users use Pinterest to plan for purchases and 87% of polled users say they've purchased because of Pinterest. Pinterest has 291 million active users. The demographics are the largest age category of 18 to 35 with 80% female audience. The male audience is growing fast at the moment. Its purpose is kind of scrapbooking, lead generation for clothing, art, home decor, photography, and food businesses. The first pro is excellent potential for driving traffic. The second is it's a low cost paid advertising still. The third is over 40% of Pinterest users have a household income of over 100K. The downside is it's not suited for all businesses. The second area that's not so good is it's time consuming to create and post consistent images and infographics. And the third area is it's difficult to stand out. So let's go on to the next social channel and that is YouTube owned by Google, a video-based platform. Users go to YouTube for entertainment, research, and to learn new things. YouTube allows you to post several types of video from lifestyle, travel, talking head, which this is, and live videos. The secret to success when creating videos is to optimize for SEO, as YouTube is the second biggest search engine. YouTube has over 2 million monthly users. The demographics are the largest age category is really, it's all ages from very young to very old. The purpose is brand awareness and service industry how-to content. And the pros for YouTube is videos drive high conversions, a great way to showcase your brand, people, products, and services, one of the best social media channels channels to engage and develop relationships. The downside of YouTube is videos take longer to create and publish. Users increasingly have greater expectation for higher quality production of video and audio. And finally, harder to get attention for your videos and requires a long-term consistent publication plan. So let's get on to the next one, which is Instagram. Instagram launched in 2010 and soon became the go-to social platform. Facebook owns Instagram and has developed it as an alternative social media platform. Instagram has the same access to the Facebook audience. The benefits of its partnership with Facebook is that it can also use the Facebook paid advertising system. Instagram is a visual platform with images and videos driving attention. Instagram has over 1 billion users every day. The demographics, the largest age category is 18 to 29. The purpose of Instagram is building relationships and conversations, lead generation, especially for retail, art, food, entertainment, and beauty businesses. The first pro is appealing visual aspect to the platform, taking over in popularity from Facebook for the younger generation is the second pro. The third pro is created specifically for the mobile market and users. And the fourth and final pro is fully set up for e-commerce. The downside is difficult to gain insights and analytics. The second thing is it needs high level of posting strategy. And the third downside for some is it requires high quality images. The next one is Facebook Messenger. Messenger is a separate platform from Facebook. Messenger allows Facebook users to send direct messages to each other, and business pages can do the same with followers. One of its uses is for lead generation with links to external websites or shops on Facebook. You can also create an in-depth automated messaging for users who contact your Facebook page. Facebook Messenger has access to the entire Facebook audience. The demographics are same as Facebook. And the purpose is for building relationships and conversations and lead generation. The pros are access to the same audience as Facebook, automation with inquiries that can go through a set of questions and answers, easier to have a high reach with organic adverts. The downside is can switch off your audience if it's used badly, not focused on e-commerce, and three, requires a user to initiate the conversation. The next on my list is Snapchat. Snapchat has many things in common with Instagram. The platform allows users to send images and videos directly to other users or their Snapchat story. A Snapchat sent to another user is only able to be viewed once. In contrast, a Snapchat story or business story can get views for 24 hours. Snapchat has over 350 million monthly active users. The demographic of largest age category is 18 to 24. Its purpose is really building relationships and conversations, lead generation, 
especially for retail, art, food, entertainment, and beauty businesses. The first pro is appealing visual aspect. Created specifically for the mobile market and users, a large, younger user base. The cons, or downside, is difficult to gain insights and analytics. It needs a high level of posting strategy and requires high quality images and videos. And here we are with the next one, which is Quora. It's spelt in the description below, just in case I'm not saying it right. Quora launched in 2010, and is another platform that is not a social media platform in the traditional sense. However, it is a fantastic platform to teach and learn. The central premise is that users post questions to the community and other users with expertise can answer those questions. Quora allows you to show your expertise on specific subjects and increase your authority in your field. The net result is sending traffic to your website. Quora is a great place to search for questions and sectors that you have expertise. Answering questions gets attention from other users that are interested in the subject matter. You can highlight information a post or video that you have published on the subject in your answer and drive traffic. Users can upvote your answers, giving it more authority and a higher rank in the list of answers. Quora has over 300 million active users. Its demographics are all ages. The purpose for using it is building brand awareness, authority and trust. And the pros of Quora is 300 plus million active users. It's free to use. The opportunity to answer questions in nearly every field or sector. The downsides are knowing the right questions to search for and answering questions without being overly self-promoting. In summary, the key takeaway from this video are that social media takes time, effort, and consistency. Done right, it can generate new and repeat business. Poorly done, it can consume all your time with little or no return. Most B2B businesses are likely to use the platforms to get attention, engage, point the user to their website. Most B2C companies can sell products on or within some of the platforms through the e-commerce integration. Choosing the right social media platform for your business should reflect the demographics and what the platform can do for your business. Always have a purpose and a goal from utilizing social media and focus on delivering those areas. I hope this video has helped you. If you want to know when I upload the next video, click subscribe, then click the bell icon and YouTube will tell you when my next video is published. Until then, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.